Megan set a line. It was one line. The Megan's Law. The Meg, yeah, the Megan's Law thing. Yeah. Nicki then did a whole rollout for this record, which I think comes off to the people as you care too you much. Care too much about that one. And line. she didn't. She didn't even lean in on you. Right. So now, now you just gave her a great reason to lean in on you. So, and I think Nicki wants that. If you're really a rapper, it gotta be better than what we got. Because if if, if, it, if it's not, if you're really a rapper, Megan's gonna tear that ass up. Rap life review. We here, Ebro. Eddie in LA, Lowe's here. Where's Nadeska? It's a Nicki oh, Minaj. Oh, don't do that. Oh, not again, not again. <laughs> Yo, what's happening, man? Why you, why you set up our girl, dog? Off, off the, no, that's off my the no, jump. No, Nadeska's family. I will protect her at all costs. But if we, this Rap Life Review, everybody catch it. Yeah, everybody. everybody catch it. Every episode. Fair. Somebody, if it ain't me, it's you yep. it, or your pants or, you know. <laughs> or yours. Or mine or whatever. Somebody going to catch it. I like my pants. I like your pants. <laughs> it's definitely, uh, you know, we can't not address them. Man. No, you know yeah, what I'm saying? No, What's I mean, wrong with my pants? I mean, yeah, the, you know, kung fu fighting. and. Oh, you, you know, see me? You like, see yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, this week we got to get into some things. You know we're going to get to that Nikki and, and Megan situation, but there's new music out here yeah. for your, uh, you know, listening pleasures. One of them is very, very, very amazing, which is Benny the Butcher's album. Mm -hmm. Eddie, did you get any time on that? So I listened to Benny the Butcher. I absolutely love the album. But at first, I just was kind of liking it because I messed up. Here's how I messed up. I listened to it at the gym at first. And Benny the Butcher, I'm so used to how we consume rap nowadays where it's more of a vibe. It's just a feeling, right? So I'm in the gym catching the high energy because Benny's still high energy. But because I'm focused on something else, I'm not catching the bars. Right. So I'm seeing everybody else talk about it and like, oh, it's great. It's this, it's that. And I'm like, damn. Did I miss something? Because it was just cool to me. I was driving somewhere and it was far as I was seen. I was in that. Yeah, that's where that's it's the driving at. music. It hit me completely different. And I was like, oh, okay. Now I get it. I messed up. This album is great because you have to really pay attention. And I know we're not used to paying attention in 2024. Even me, I kind of screwed up. Your yeah. Uncle Ed, who's used to paying attention. And bruh, once you really get to hear what he's kicking and like Jada Kiss on the verses and like, oh There's my so God, much in bro. there. Kevin Gates, uh, he does crazy interviews and says crazy things. Does, does However, crazy things. though, uh, these albums, if you've been listening to Kevin Gates throughout these years, he makes great music too, mm -hmm. though. Mm -hmm. There's a whole, I would say like, yo, the Rod Waves, the whole like that Southern that, bluesy. That, that's, that's that lineage. Yeah, that's all in there, bro. Okay. Kevin Gates is one of them guys, and he got a new project out, uh, The Ceremony. And then Lyrical Lemonade, shout to y'all out Chicago. Uh, you spent time on the Lyrical Lemonade. Yeah, brought Eminem out. Um, who else was on there? Uh, I'm drawing a blank, but it's just like a- I mean, Juice World, Corday, Dave, J uh, Jack Harlow, Little Yachty, Tizo Touchdown. They're a Chicago-based um, factory of like shout events. Shout to Cole Bennett. Yeah, events, clothing, uh, event production, music. So they just put this big, big, big collaboration uh, together, and it, it's it, it flows very, very smoothly. That Doomsday Part One and the Doomsday Part Two, that that was one of the best sequence back to back songs I've ever heard in my life, bro. Because if you don't know, it's they took that old Eminem flip. It was uh, Corday and Juice World, and Juice World absolutely rest in peace spitting bars with Corday. You already know what he's on. And then all of a sudden, the beat starts to slow down. And I didn't know what it was about to do yet. Mm -hmm. The beat starts to slow down. And you're like, what's going on? I didn't realize it flipped to the next song. Then Eminem's rapping over his old beat, flipped a little bit. He starts uh, dissing Benzino in oh, there. I'm yeah, not sure yeah. if Koi caught a stray or not. That two songs back to back alone, I was like, well done. But my favorite song on there, though, is the um, the joint with, with Kid Leroy. Um, and uh, what's my man's name? Lil Tecca. Oh, Lil Tecca. Yeah, that's a big Banger. Tour. Big Up Ice Spice dropped a new single. Uh, definitely, uh, she in that same pocket, that same bag. You think you're the shit, you're not even a fart. Bars. Why are you trying to keep a straight face, man? What's wrong with you, bro? I wouldn't say bars. Shout out to her Grammy nominations. Yeah. It's a good song. I like the song. Nah, it, you know what? I'll tell you, I'll put it like this. Ice Spice is focused on being Ice Spice. Ain't nothing wrong that's with that. Ain't nothing, that's, ain't nothing wrong with that. Damn, yo, cause let me tell you, her and her that. fans, they know where to they stay. They eat this up. They know the where to stay. They know how to play it. They know who to play it with. 
They knew who to play it for, and yep. they just stay right in that. And that I have to admire. They 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 have blinders on. Like this is what the fuck we're doing, for however long we're gonna do it. Well, and the beat that she's on. If you out here in New York, you've heard the uh, you you know about four one uh, Jen Carter, Kyle Rich, yeah. the whole Brooklyn movement. So them keys that play in the beginning of that bent song, it's a flip. Of that, of no, she flipped it. I Spice took what they had and, and flipped it for, or yeah. Riot, the producer, and they flipped it in some other key chord pro pro progressions and kept that little drill beat to it. Yeah, so it kind of goes with that whole wave. It's a part of that whole wave. Gotta respect so. it. If you like yeah. it, I love it. Now, the topic of the week, Lil Dicky. Yo, what's up, bro? <laughs> what, what? What happened? What Lil Dicky took shots at me on a record. What do you say? Uh, I didn't listen to it, but it got sent to me a bunch of times. It says, I'm I'm in another fucking league, my G. I don't really care what the Ebros think. I don't really care what they need. Here's Lil Dicky right here, actually, talking to Zane Lowe on the Zane Lowe Show. Ever since I've come into especially hip-hop, it's like, who is this comedy guy? Like, is he, like, making fun of everything? Is he, like culture vulturing you know but i think like the did anyone really honest question did anyone actually call you out and say look dude i'm not a really a fan of what you're trying to achieve and you had a dialogue with them trying to figure it out has anyone ever kind of questioned it to you oh ebro did it on the radio yeah. and he was just like i'm going to be honest it's because you're white and you're making jokes about it and yeah, you yeah. know and then i said to him i said i you know totally hear you but like let me ask does it ever feel like i'm not being myself and he said no it does not so i think to me it's like the ultimate thing you can do as an artist is like be like so pure in yourself with your intentions and if you're doing like to me i like the, how i ex like would imagine a culture vulture would be is like trying to act like something they're not and like right, totally right, like right, stealing right. a whole swag and style like when it's not even them but i feel like everything i do as a rapper really does come it's so unique yeah. no one else does anything like what i do and i think that and people respect it i think because i'm just being myself that's a perfect perfect interaction between two people who care very deeply about what they do i would expect ebro to ask that question and, yeah. I, and I would expect you to give that answer it's yeah. kind of the perfect to and fro now this goes this goes now this goes back to a time okay i think i've always thought little dicky is funny talented hilarious all of that yeah great tv show but there was a time when he was like you know he wanted me to take him serious as a rapper was the energy i was getting mm -hmm. and i was like it's weird al yankovic kind of like funny rap type stuff. But that doesn't mean it's not talented. Right, 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 right. But I can't, I just wasn't really into the whole like goofy, funny white dude being goofy about hip hop and it being like taken serious. I just wasn't, I mean, I just like, wasn't there, it, you know, and I just, that's it. You know, if you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of Lil Dicky as a rapper, right? And I do understand. Big fan. Big fan. His music, his music, not him just rapping like yeah. his music. His, he, he makes, he does make good music and he can uh -huh. rap. He can rap. He can but rap. But the stitch, sure. like, from what you're looking at it, like, it's, it's always like funny. It's always goofy. It's always just. And off, that's cool. And that's cool. So it's like, it's not the shit that we're used to, like the hardcore shit. Like, if you want to be considered as a good rapper or a good lyricist, like, I, I shouldn't be laughing at the shit that you're, you're spitting. But if you strip all that down and go back to his previous projects, like Hump Days, Professional Rapper, um, he did a couple freestyles over, you know, some Drake records. There, there's shit there. There's a lot of shit there. Like, when you break his, like, he can really, really, really rap. But I understand you looking at him like, yo, what the fuck is this? I know what it is. And um, I don't mind the comedy of it all. You know, I just like, you know, when it comes down to, um, you know, at that point, I just was like, I can't take this serious. I don't know if it's even meant to be taken serious. It's common. Like, what are we even talking about? And I also am somebody who, like, you know, when people not of the culture show up, when they're not black and they're not from the experience, I always question, why are you here? What are you here to contribute to this culture to help it move forward? Mm -hmm. Because for me, for me, this hip hop thing has created an outlet for a marginalized group of individuals, black Americans specifically, and black people as a whole globally, for us to tell our stories, see ourselves, and make sure that we're not erased from society. Mm -hmm. So when people who show up and they're not from that or of that, I have to go. It's my job. I feel like it's my obligation to go. 
Why are you here? What do you have to offer to make sure that this shit gets taken care of the right way? Eminem shows up. He's like, yo, I'm making sure this shit gets taken care of the right way. Rosenberg, who I work with, another white dude in the game. He's like, no, 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 I'm here to be p- pure with this hip hop shit. Like, I want to make sure it's done right. Mm. And so when I meet somebody who's like, oh, it's all a joke and it's all a game. I'm like, no, 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 this ain't no joke. This ain't no joke. Mm. Not from where I come from. Right. So I think that was my energy. I don't once again, don't have a problem with Lil Dicky. Mm. Don't think that he's not talented. Like his show, Dave. Mm. All that's cool. But when you go, if you're going to ask me, like, you know how I get when you try to be real. You know, y'all, y'all know how I'm going to get. I know. I know. I know. You know what's weird, bro, <laughs> is I feel very similar to you. Like everything you're saying, I wholeheartedly agree with. What's weird for me is I was there for the Zane interview. So whenever the video comes out, you're going to see me sitting right next to Lil Dicky. And I didn't fully understand. Like, I didn't know the song came out. I didn't know your name was in the bars. And, you know, you're my guy. I'm also going to respect anyone that's sitting in front of me, regardless of how I feel about their art. Like, there's going to be just a love of respect I, yeah, I give yeah, to of you. Course, of course. But I didn't fully understand the complexity of the conversation you guys had with him. So I ended up deflecting. Like, I don't know if you're going to see the video. I was like, oh, I think it's kind of the. So it puts me in a weird position. I'm like, damn, I, I feel what you're saying. I 100% agree. And it was weird, too, because he randomly. Even though Zane posed the question, we weren't talking about you. He no, was just no, saying no. in Dickie general. Dickie knows what he's doing, bro. He knew he came to Apple Music. He knows <laughs> I work here. Dicky ain't stupid. He came. He was like, yo, I'm going to talk my shit about Ebro at his shit. And I'm still here. Like, in his brain, he like, yo, I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still yeah. here, bro. You wasn't fucking how, with me. How, how long ago was that, that interview? When was the Chris Brown shit with him and Chris Brown? When I woke up like Chris Brown. When was that? That was like four years ago, maybe? No, nah, four? That was like five, it was seven. Pre, it was pre-pandemic. 2019. No, bro, that's... I woke up like Chris Brown. We might, bro. That's like five years ago. That was 2019. You sure? Yeah. yeah five years ago. Four or five years ago. I thought yeah. it would longer than that. I was going to say 2016, 2017. Well, nah, whatever. Yeah. It was a while ago. And I love that record. That record was fire. The, the, the video was fire. I, the record the was concept, cool. I like, I like the video the, I like fire. both. Yeah, the concept, yeah. the music like video, both. like everything was fire about it. But I do understand... When you listen, break it down, man, when you break listen, it down man, like that, listen, I get, man. I get your gripe, listen, not, not a personal gripe. It's not a gripe. It's just. Oh, a, it's a gripe. It's a gripe. Is it a gripe? I'll, yeah, that's a gripe. I'm with you, bro. Like no backtrack. Like, it's, yeah, it's not. I, I, yeah, it's not. not it's not a. You don't have a problem. You don't have an issue. No, I just got to make it known. That's why I say it's not. I don't know. Is it, is it a gripe? It's just like I it got things. Certain things got to be said. Or asked. certain things got to be said. Certain things have to be. Certain lines have to be held. You know what I mean? Certain things just have to. Otherwise. They'll take this from black folks, too. Y'all know that. And, 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 too, they get to be successful at Accelerator right. Because let's just call it spade to spade. He gets to go have a successful TV show and skip some steps. Jack right. Harlow gets to jump straight into being in movies and getting Kentucky Fried Chicken yeah. uh, advertised. Like, they get to skip steps. It's just the reality. People like MGK get to just be like, all right, I'm going to make a rock record now. Or, like, even going back to Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys, shout out to them. They make great art. Rest in peace. Um, but they got they get to skip steps because of the perception of yeah. how they look. So it it will be if we're gonna talk about this culture being black people speaking on this huge platform, we just gotta call a spade a spade and just be honest. And I can't placate everybody's feeling by not telling the truth. It's just the reality of it. So I and I'm I'm speaking for you guys too. Correct me if I'm wrong. I take that personal when those things happen. So if someone's in my face, like a little Dicky, aka Dave. I can wholeheartedly understand why you would bring that same energy to him because it's just the reality of what happens with this genre. The other thing is, I just now, right now, was today, this moment years old, that I learned that his real name was Dave. The show is called Dave. Show, I know, but show. I thought that was just based on, I don't know, he just made up a name. Like, I, I'm, I'm not he that just made up. He just made up Dave? No, he just that's made a up a character just, for the show. That was that's a name based he just on his make real up? life. Like, all right, yeah, the, the most creative thing. All right, so Dave. boom, I'm glad you're saying that. I'm glad you're saying that. Why'd you come in the rap game as Little Dicky? I can't answer that for you. You know why. I know, because it's a play on being white, and I got a little dick, and the little yeah. rap, and ah, all this. Bro, I didn't have time for all that, bro. So you have a gripe. Yeah, okay. I have a gripe. Oh, sorry, Beef is back. It's not like it's back. No, I'm not saying. I'm just, that's the gripe. Like, he's, he's playing in our face. That's what Ebro believes. I mean, that's what we're, we're looking at. He's but he's, he's, it's entertaining, and it's talented. So he's there's good. that. Two that days. was the biggest story dude. of the week. Y'all, was it? That was oh, Rap was it? Life Review. Thanks for tuning in.
Nah. I want to ask now that it's been going on for a full, almost a full week. Nicki Minaj, Megan Thee Stallion. The comment sections on many of the blogs and this and that uh, seem to be very, the Nicki Minaj song is terrible. Okay? Um, that's fine. Whatever. Um, also, Nicki Minaj is uh, angry and unraveling and, and ah, da, 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 da. all that. Let people on, on the internet eat that up. All right. I want to ask you, we'll start with you, Lo, since you're very tuned in to rap beef and have been for many years. Um, how do you view this one? How do you, how do you, is this entertaining? Is it not entertaining? Um, what do you see? Um, all right. So if I look at it from a music standpoint, just, you know, all the clown and shit aside, I think Nikki's song is terrible. Okay. Um, just off, off rip. Um, but like you pointed out something earlier before we hit the, the record button, you were like, if a, if a guy was going ham like Nicki is, doing all the antics and all this, you know, the side social shit, we'd be like, ah, yeah, we'd be eating it up. I think it's because Nicki, we've seen Nicki like become unhinged by the littlest, smallest shit. And it doesn't really produce good quality music as we see with this, with this, with this beef, right? Cause I'm trying to figure out like where was it in that Megan song where it just it, it put her over to the to the tipping point? Like what was it? Yeah, I don't I don't I mean you'd have to ask her. I don't know. Like it's what was it that made her go but, on a but four you're day? Saying, you're saying, do you but do you like this beef? Are you entertained I, I don't, by it? I'm not, I'm, I don't like this beef. I'm not entertained by it because it's not it's not making good diss records, diss bars. Like now it's becoming like highly personal. I know rap beefs, there's no limit, there's no there are no rules, whatever the case is, but there's there's something different about this. There's something off about this. Eddie, how you feel about it? So here's the thing, bro. I agree. We look at beef differently when it's women because let me remind you, Gucci Mane has a song called The Truth. Where he's talking about telling Jeezy go pick his dead homeboy up. Ice Cube has no Vaseline. We got Ether. We got back to back. Hit him Goopies up. Freestyle. Real motherfucking G's. Um, second round knockout. Dollars and cents. Dude's talking about legit, if I find you outside, I will murder you, okay? So, take that. So, why do we feel differently about this? Excluding the fact that it's women. There's a few things at play here. Nicki Minaj, more than any other superstar, has been able to mobilize her fan base, right? Just look at the comments to this alone. We have yet to say anything bad about Nicki Minaj except for Lowe saying he don't like the song. This, the comment section of this, if we don't say nothing, it's going to be talking bad about Nadeska. It's going to be talking personal about you, Lo. Ebro has some grace because he did an interview with Nikki recently. Man, I'm a so bar, the, man. The, the, they, like, they like him now. They, yeah, but they if like he didn't do the now. interview. I, but when they Nikki, like you, yo, they like when Nikki you posted this, when Nikki, when I, when I posted from uh, my Ebro in the morning, my morning show with Rosenberg and them talking about it, and she said, at, at old man Ebro, shut your ass up. And they called me by my government, Ibrahim, mm -hmm. and said, rap beefs and standing on business when you become a mom after six years of slander are two different things. Don't make me come back. And then she put sunglasses on, um, which means, you know, she's just playing what or whatever. Is, but, oh, okay. But, 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 okay, so let, let, me, let me get this, this off, right? So her fan base mobilizes unlike any other celebrity we've ever seen. Yeah. The issue that starts happening is, they will try to dox you. It stops being about music and about personal beef. And I'm someone, I love beef. I'll pick sides. You know, that's why I didn't like Nas for years. I have no issue with beef. But when fans start doing things like trying to find Meg's mom's cemetery yeah. and posting the address online, yeah. that's when we start having issues. That's why I said I'm, I don't like this. I don't like, I don't like where this is going. I don't like what, what it's producing. I don't like the... The, the things surrounding it, like if we could just keep it to like the songs and measuring the metrics on the songs and who hit harder and who said what, this, that, and the third, then cool, we, we can leave it there and wait for the next round. Or if it, if this is where it, it dies, it dies. But like everything you just mentioned, when these like weirdos start doing shit and start doing unnecessary shit for a person they never so, even met or will meet, it, it, it takes the fun out of the competition of what these two are doing, male or female. Ebro had it happen to me. Oh yeah, that's right. I did. The, the barbs came Ebro, from Oh, yeah, I remember that. Like, bro, me, me and Ebro saw love, right? He playfully, I had a, a, a tweet that was like a nothing, it was like a nothing tweet about Nicki Minaj. It wasn't even dogging or nothing. 
Ebro being Ebro, like oh, retweets it with some sarcasm. I remember that day. Bruh. That was funny. People were threatening to to they were calling my girlfriend names. Yeah, at the time. I, I remember. I they remember were that. threatening that was, to kill that was my fucked dog. Up. But, yeah, but that's like, fucked it up. Was, they, I'm pretty sure if I I stopped I, I stopped reading the comments because it got so crazy. Like I was like, whatever, I muted it. But I'm pretty sure like my address probably went up there at some point. Like it is destructive behavior. And don't act like doxing can't go both ways. Like I know we older, but we know how to use the internet too. We can dox folks too. We just don't have that much energy. And that's the difference between this beef, in my personal view, from past beefs because what they're saying it's like whatever they're, they're talking wild about each other like that don't, that don't move so, me so let me i say this i i have had the fortunate or unfortunate uh uh journey in life to have been on both sides media from the Pac biggie shit all the way till now the weirdo behavior you guys speak of has always existed. It just wasn't social media. When there was an East Coast, West Coast beef, and I'm, I'm going to use air quotes because it wasn't really that. Mm -mm. There was weirdos outside that literally were picking sides that had nothing to do with any of the factions involved. I've actually been in physical altercations with human, other humans. You? Me, myself. With other humans, I lived in California and they told me I was on my East Coast bullshit because I had dreadlocks and I liked Gangstar and I liked Big and I liked all I like Pac too. I like and you know I was on the radio or playing a party and, and motherfuckers would try to step to you. Mm -hmm. So weirdo behavior. Like you don't know none of these people, my dude. Like, why are you <laughs> this emotional? So weirdo behavior has always existed. Gotcha. So let's set that aside. Um, an artist losing, and I'm using air quote, losing their shit on a record or being overly emotional about something on a record or whatever, hit him up. I remember when hit him up came out and people that were in media, DJs, whatever was like, yo, Pac is bugging. Mm -hmm. He's way too angry on this record. Mm -hmm. This is way too real. He needs to bring it down. Blah, blah, blah. Fast forward to now, people are like, nah. But he's on a record bugging the fuck out. Right? So I'm sure if there was IG Live at that time, <laughs> Pop would have been on that joint for a few days. <laughs> now, we may not think that Nikki, what Nikki's mad about is grounds for her to be mad. We may not. But... Clearly, she wants to, she got time for this, mm -hmm. okay? So, I, I just wanted to say that. And the level of personal on Hit Em Up was extravagant. Wild personal. So, I do believe that Nikki in this moment decided, I want to be in some shit. She didn't have to respond. But she was like, you know what? I got sold out concerts. I got hit songs scorching right now. I'm back outside. Fuck it. I'm going to unleash. And the way she unleashed was, the way I interpreted it now, was her showing the complete process of making the song. That's because, remember, she's on IG Live, the beats playing in the background. Yeah, yeah. Most people don't even know what she was actually doing was showing you how she's about to come up with the concept for the song. She's letting everybody behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. So you're hearing her freestyle and make up little jokes and da 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 Then she starts tweeting her bars because she wants to show you. Remember, Nikki wants to re-emphasize re this and on the song, she re-emphasizes it. I write my shit. I do this for real, for real. Mm -hmm. And y'all motherfuckers want to be in rap and motherfuckers want to be artists and all this, but do y'all do this for real, for real? So I think that's a part of, I think people either refuse to get that, don't want to get it, don't care. Boom. Also, Nikki suffers from the fact she don't have a lot of grace from public because of her fan base being so rabid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and because she's had issues with people. People don't like her for whatever reason. And Nikki has told us multiple times she's going to play the bad, the bad guy. She's the heel on purpose. She wants to, she wants you, to you, be that person. Then you can't... You, 
like with that said, and, and that's fine if that's the stance you're gonna take, you can't get mad at like when we look at you sideways every time something happens in your corner because you've already declared I'm I'm the I'm the dark cloud. Well, I'm, I'm I don't the, know. I don't know if she gets mad. I don't. I don't know. You it's have not to mad. It's like I mean, yeah. But I mean, yeah, no. But she wants to smoke, y'all. Like and okay. Yo, there's and, nothing. There's nothing wrong with that because you're a rapper, and, right? And, and so you want to see. But it. let's factor in all the things that it. Nikki's from Southside Jamaica Queens. You know who else from Southside Jamaica Queens? Fifty. You know who else would be bugging like this and bugged like? I mean, Fifty bugged out for albums, bruh. Multiple <laughs> albums. And still to this day, 50 will not leave Ja Rule alone. Right now, buying today. A, that was but buying like a that, concert no, ticket. When you look so at that, like the, these it was like in their neighborhoods going at it before the record. No, no, no. No, no. 50 was going at it with someone who financed 50 and Ja Rule. I don't even know what they No, that was I, no, had. that that was, I think, what happened was I think. 50 explained the story. He said, um... My point is this. No, let me... Go ahead. But, but, but... No, but no. Why you think of it? No, Why no, you I'm, think of it? I can't think of it. Yeah, let me. Um, no, but I'm, I'm going to talk to the people now. You okay. think, I talk. Okay. While you think about that, it should be noted, though, that to, to, to this moment, Nikki wants to make this a moment where she has it out with someone that she knows is, in hip-hop, a big star. Well, all right, so with and, that, with and, that, with that, with, with that said, with that said, with that said, let me just no, 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 you, no, no. Megan's a real rapper, though. Megan, Megan is someone that Nikki, I believe, goes, oh no, 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 this chick is really rapping. So we if can you're do this rap if thing. you're gonna do this rap thing, it's gotta be better than what you just put out. That's fine. And that's, 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 that's it. That's, 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 that's it. That's fine, bro. That's it. Would you? It's gotta be better. You, you did a lot of stuff. You did a lot of stuff for Nikki. I see what you did there. What'd you think of the song? I thought the song was good. I didn't love it. But there's bars in there, and there's bars in there that people are looking past. There's fire shit in there. And I will say this, though. I think Nikki overplayed her hand. How so? Because Megan said a line. It was one line. The Megan's Law. The Meg yeah, the Megan's Law thing. Yeah. Nikki then did a whole rollout for this record, which I think comes off to the people as... You care too much. You care too much about that one and line. She and didn't, she didn't even lean in on you. Right. So now, now you just gave her a great reason to lean in on you. So, and I think Nikki wants that. If you're really a rapper, it gotta be better than what we got. Because if if if, if it's not, if you're really a rapper, Megan's gonna tear that ass up. If you're really a rapper, Megan, and you want this, but I, you know, Megan said what she said when she dropped her record, which is the number one song on Apple Music, I think today. Which is, after I say this, I ain't saying nothing else. This is it. So you, think, she so, you, so you think she puts the she puts the, she puts the gun down? Like it's, it's it's over, no more no more shots. I mean, based on what she said in the beginning of the song, based on what she said in the beginning of the song. Now, the other thing about this, you know, that I think needs to be noted is, you know, while everybody's talking about this song from Nicki or this song from Megan, it's working for both of them. Yeah, of course it is. The yeah. promo is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. it's getting coverage. It's getting talked about. Nicki got a sold out tour. This coming summer, and all she's around headlining the world. Uh, wireless. Yeah, she, she all around the world. People gonna come to see the spectacle and what she gonna do. Mm -hmm. the, Meg's she's about got to tour multiple too. hit songs on that right album. now happening, mm -hmm. which is what, a phenomenal album. Which is a phenomenal album. And the challenge for Megan is after this moment and this song, what did, what are these hits gonna be like? Because this is actually cleansing the palate for Megan too. Because remember when the whole Tory Lane shit happened, people was, and y'all internet motherfuckers so fraudulent. Yo, wasn't Megan like persona non grata four months ago or whatever it was? Mm -hmm. Now it's, oh, fuck Nikki. Megan, we riding with you. <laughs> yeah. Parasocial relationships, y'all. We don't know these people. Yeah, nah. Ebro, Ebro and Lowe know these people. The rest of us, we don't know these Why people. The how, do, how do I get? I don't know. You know people. Know. I don't know people. I know Nikki a long time. I mean, obviously, professionally, yeah, we know each see? other, but. I mean, she got me blocked, so I don't think she knows me. Who? Nikki. But that's, what did you say? What did you say? Just said I didn't like some of her music. What, nah, what would you say? I wasn't disrespectful. What did you say? What did you say? I just said what'd some of it was, was, wasn't. Wait, what? Some of it was trash. What? 
Trash is kind of disrespectful. Some of her music. So what were the words you decided to use? It was because, a long time ago. Because if you, exactly, so now Lowe, if you go back in Lowe's tweets and you want to see some wild shit. No, 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 no. I wasn't, I, I wasn't like that. I wasn't like Bruh. that. Bruh. I wasn't like, because if I was. What did you say to George Clooney? I was, the George Clooney was wild. That's your, right. that's your most, yeah, What did you say wild. to George Clooney? Hey, George Clooney, your haircut sucks. Oh, and so does your sense of humor. I'm on you all night, boy. George, yo, what? Wait, wait time out. Who don't like George Clooney? I was watching, I was watching the Oscars, right? And I had a whole bottle of Pinot. The Sunday night, I was feeling good. I was watching the war show. And you weren't feeling too good. You went to war with George Clooney. Pan, George Clooney. They pan, they pan to him, and he didn't laugh. But I didn't like that because I thought the joke was funny. So I said I got it off my chest. I said what I said. And so the weirdos on the internet that people speak of, he once was. <laughs> just I just and just for clarity. So motherfuckers get yo motherfuckers get older and get jobs and shit. They want to act like y'all weirdos now. They was y'all. I don't have a problem with George Clooney. <laughs> I was just drunk. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I love George Clooney. <laughs> It's been a rap life review, man. <laughs> we know y'all gonna comment, but we'll see y'all. Why you bring that shit up? Cause, man, I had to, man. You be up here talking like you wasn't one of these people, man. What's up? Nadeska here, and if you enjoyed this episode of the Rap Life Review, you can catch me here every week with Lowkey and Ebro. Subscribe, hit the like button, make sure you never miss an episode, and of course, drop us a comment below, and we'll see you next time on the Rap Life Review.